In an earlier lecture, we began our discussion on potential energy, and we focused on one type of potential energy known as gravitational potential energy. Now I'd like to look at a second type of potential energy known as elastic potential energy. So elastic potential energy is the energy that is stored in a compressed or stretched spring that is assumed to be massless. So we can make that assumption because the mass of the spring is usually much, much smaller than the mass of the object on which our spring is acting on. So let's suppose that we have the following spring and we apply a net force, a force onto our spring. So we push the spring, thereby compressing it a certain displacement x. Now, the spring will act back. It will create a force that will point in the opposite direction of its compression. So that's exactly why we have the negative. So this equation gives us the magnitude of the force that the spring creates. The negative sign simply specifies that the force the spring creates points in the opposite direction of its compression. So if our spring is being compressed this way, the spring creates a force that points in the opposite direction. So, this K simply represents our stiffness in the spring, and that is called the spring constant. And next is simply our displacement of our compression distance. So, when I compress my spring or stretch my spring, what I'm doing is storing energy in the form of elastic potential energy. So when we press on a spring and compress it, we transfer energy from the hand and store it in the spring as elastic potential energy. So for example, if I push down on my spring and I hold that spring, I place an object such as a ball on the tip of the spring and I let go, that spring will accelerate our object because there is stored energy in the form of elastic potential energy. Now, what exactly is the formula for this type of elastic potential energy? Well, it's given by the following equation. So, the change in our elastic potential energy is equal to the integral of the dot product of the force and our infinitely small change in displacement uh, from x dot to x1. So, we take the integral between these two intervals, our initial position and the final position. So, if we plug in this formula into this force and integrate, we get the following result. So, one half times the spring constant multiplied by the square of our displacement. This gives how much elastic potential energy is stored in our spring when we either compress it or stretch it a certain distance change in x. So, let's look at the following example. Suppose that a spring with a spring constant of 1,000 newtons per meter is compressed 0.2 meters and a ball with a mass of 3 kilograms is placed on the spring. Calculate the final velocity of the ball when the ball uh, detaches from the spring. And let's neglect friction. So here we have a spring, we compress the spring, and we store some amount of energy, elastic potential energy in that spring. So then we take a ball, we place a ball onto the end of the spring, we let go of that spring, and the elastic potential energy will, transfer, will transform into kinetic energy of the moving object. And we, would, and we want to calculate what the velocity of the object is. So let's begin by calculating what the elastic potential energy that is stored in the spring, knowing what is given, knowing our spring constant and knowing our compression distance. So we use this formula, 1 half kx squared equals 1 half a thousand newtons per meter multiplied by the square of 0.3 meters. So we find that 45 joules of elastic potential energy is stored in that spring. Then we take the object, we place it on the end of the spring, and we let go of that spring. Now, the 45 joules of elastic potential energy will be transformed into kinetic energy of the moving object. 
So how quickly? What's the velocity of the object? Well, let's uh, take our kinetic energy formula, one half mv squared, and equate that to 45 joules. Why? Well, because this entire amount of elastic potential energy will be transformed to kinetic. So we equate these, we solve for velocity, and we see that the velocity of the object is approximately 5.5 meters per second.